Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So Bill, today we got a good one. I know you've been showing a lot of homes mm -hmm. to people, you know, at least you're trying to find people homes right now. And this one, today what we're talking about is Florida home sellers in full panic because they can't sell their homes. And I don't think it's just Florida. That was like, like giggling. I'm like, I don't think that's just here. You know? So basically, Florida homeowners hit with a housing market double whammy. That's what this article is about, and they are, because I'm, you know, I'm meeting a lot of sellers, and a lot of the deals are falling apart. So before, when I was doing inspections, I would find issues with the houses, but the deal would still go through because the people were desperate. They wanted to buy a house, mm -hmm. and they liked the location, and they liked the house. Yeah, but there was issues. Now it just feels like. I find the littlest thing that before was not a big deal, and now it's becoming a big deal. And they're like, well, I don't want this house. There's 10 more down the street. And I don't know about that, but okay. <laughs> there's a lot of homes for sale that I'm running into, yeah. and then basically- the, but no, you're right. It, people do back out much faster now. They're, they're backing out much faster yeah. right now. Yeah, because they have options. And not, but, but not only that, but it's just like, a lot of sellers, mm -hmm. you know, we'll read the article, but a lot of sellers are asking unrealistic prices. You know, they're expecting a lot of things that's not happening anymore. Right. So, so that's what we're going to talk about today. And do me a favor, if you like this kind of content, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel and it's greatly appreciated. And it's 100 degrees here and we're standing right now and dying in the heat to do this video. So Bill, start us off. It is hot and sticky today. Yeah. All right, so Florida housing market is currently facing two key challenges according to this article. Home sales that are stay homes for sale that are staying in the market for longer and buyers showing reluctance to enter a market that is hampered by high mortgage rates, uh, expansive home insurance costs and elevated prices. Okay, let's talk about each one real quick. Okay. Mortgage rates I heard they dipped a little bit, right? They dipped, yeah. They dipped, but they're going to go up and down a little by little here and there. As but the 3% the, the days are over with. That's not going to happen again. The, the unicorn years are done. So that's done. Right. So what do you think it will take for everybody to rush into the market on interest rates? I have an idea, and I'll explain my theory behind interest rates. What do you think the magic number is for interest rates for everybody saying, okay, I'm gonna get off the bench and I'm gonna go buy something. I think it's, well, I mean, we might be jumping ahead on the article, but it's but, in general, if we get down six and a half, between six and a half and five and a half, I think it's gonna open the floodgates. Simply because we were averaging five and a half to six prior to the pandemic anyway. Mm -hmm. And that was what we were would call a, a normal market. So mm -hmm. I think that's gonna change things. You know, when we're up in the high sevens, mid sevens, it's that's a really difficult, you know, mortgage payment that adds a lot of money to the monthly payment. You know, and a lot of people are gonna say, well, hey, back in my days and in the you know eighties, late eighties, yeah. we were paying 16, 17, 18 percent. But True. before everybody starts commenting that I do understand that, and believe it or not, I'm old enough to remember those rates, but the home prices were a lot cheaper. And then you're gonna say, well, we made- A you lot know, less money. We made a lot less money. But if you really, we did a video once on comparables, mm -hmm. income to mortgages. Right. Even though you made less money and you were paying 18%, you still could qualify for more because the mortgage was, or the, the, the home price was much lower. Right, so right now you do need to make money, a lot more money, because back then, believe it or not, even when the rates were 16, 17%, yep. a lot of people bought houses with one income in the house. Right. Just one. Yep. And now it's taking two, and that's not even com becoming common. Now it's taking two and maybe renting out part of the house or three incomes to just afford Right, and inflation wasn't so high back then. Everything, the cost of goods wasn't so high. Everything was much, much lower. So it made that more feasible to do. All right, so basically that's the mortgage thing. So here's my, my take on the mortgage thing. If mortgages drop below 6%, five and three quarters, five and a half, game on, everybody's gonna start buying, okay? Mm -hmm. But if you wait for that, I think that the prices will increase supply and demand. Of course. All right. I'm not saying not to wait for it, but you might be waiting a long time. But on the opposite side, if rates hit 10%, double digits, okay? I think it's over, 
you forget about being a realtor, forget about me being a home inspector other than for insurance. But I think the cash buyers, I think prices will plummet and I think cash buyers will come in and pick up some really, really sweet, sweet deals. So basically elevated prices. Yeah, they're so elevated, but they're being corrected a lot. Somewhat, but we're still year over year. You know, we have to see where we end up at the end of this year. Year over year, the equity gains are still up. Even though price, or, you know, prices are coming down, equity gains are still up. And I'm pretty sure this article is going to touch on that. So right, we'll, just, we'll, we'll, okay. we'll wait, unless we're just going to start ad-libbing. All right, we'll see. <laughs> Those challenges were illustrated by existing home sales data released on Friday that showed single-family home sales in Florida were down 0.5% from a year ago, mm -hmm. while condos and townhouses saw a decline of nearly 9%. Nine and we're gonna whole percent. We're going to talk about that. According to data from the Florida Realtors, as the mm -hmm. number of listings and prices shot up. We did a whole video on the death of the condos. Yeah. Well, you, you said, uh, let me get this straight. You said it was chilly or whatever. Yeah, because you said crashing. And, uh, yeah, I said the word crashing. Because, because I do think condos are crashing. No, because I don't like that. Because everybody says, it's crashing. We went down a half a percent. It's crashing. Nine percent, this one. We're talking over the last couple of years, not just this one article. Nine percent is not that much. Nine percent from the last month. If you bought two, if you bought two years ago or three years ago, nine percent is a death nail. If you bought the condo three years ago, yeah, if you're gonna sell it, yeah, if you're gonna sell it, <laughs> if you're gonna sell it, yeah, if you own the condo for the last ten years, maybe it's not that bad because you're still up overall. But if you bought it three years ago, you're kind of screwed. Am I right or am I wrong? I'm just trying to fathom why you would sell it after you just bought it. Because people don't realize. You know, they, they can't afford it because HOA fees are going up like crazy. Right. Oh, I understand You that. know, the insurance crisis in Florida, you know, it's the, home, the homeowners association has to pay, you know, insurance. What do they get? They're not going to pay for it. They're going to spread, what, if right. it's 50 units, they're going to spread the cost over 50 units. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, people didn't realize that when they bought it three years ago. It could have doubled since three years ago, the HOA fees. Could, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, that's where we talked about too, that, you know, you have to do your research and, you know, your real estate agent should be really helping you out with those kinds of things to see what's on the horizon. It, you know, for the last five years, we knew that these milestone reports and all these engineering reports were going to be due. So it's not like it snuck up on us. Um, a lot of the buildings that we see over on Clearwater Beach and stuff also have increased. You know, they were in the 500s, so they've, they've gone up significantly. They were in the 500s, now they're in the nines. And, you know, some of them even tipped over to the thousands to get all the repairs done. Um, but you know, people were ignoring it. They were ignoring it. They're like, but they were. <laughs> People were ignoring it. Well, I mean, come we, on. We, after, after the collapse, and then they started passing these laws and doing it, yeah, it hit the news a little bit, but then it disappeared for the longest time. Nobody right. talked about it. Yeah, it's like... And now it's like, okay, here it is. Look, it snuck up on us. Hey, you have a $50,000 special assessment. Yeah. Hand it over. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't have $50,000. Well, sell your unit. And you know, the HOAs, if you don't pay the assessment, they can foreclose. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, there's a process. They, they get their money, and condos are a lot more stringent than, you know, HOAs. Go ahead. You, you like the, the subject of the medium sale price? Go oh, for it. The median it. sales price of previously owned property was up 1.6% from a year ago to nearly 427000 as listings spiked by more than 15%. Townhouses and condos saw price jumps 1.5% compared to last year to 330000 with an increase in those listings of close to 14%. Now, everybody's going to get confused from what you just read. Yep. <laughs> okay. Everybody is going to be confused about what... So, explain what the median price and why... In the paragraph before, it's saying that condo prices and townhouses are crashing 9%. And now, you just read a paragraph right after that saying, hey, they just increased. So explain. So median, so let's say you took, there's 100 sales. And then they go right in the middle, 50. That's the median sale price. So what's happening? That's not the average sale price of all of them divided by, you know, 100. It's... The, uh, it's the median, yeah, the yeah, middle of the road. The condos that are a million plus dollars that are selling, yeah, they're still selling because 
these people are rich. They don't care. They don't care. So what we're seeing, even in real in, in residential real estate, we are starting to see the other side. The more expensive homes are selling because those are the people who have the additional disposable income that aren't affected as much by the maybe higher interest rate at the end of it at the specific time or have the money to put down more money on the property and purchase down the rate because they're going to stay in the property longer yeah so but then the lower ends you know aren't really selling because the people don't have the money so you right. take the rich and you cut it in half yeah it's going to go up i don't even Correct. think they should ever talk about medium price because nobody understands that and trust me nobody understands it you know unless you're in the business right you know so they're like oh the average price for this area is medium price is you know two hundred thousand dollars no right so you, the problem is every every article or every stat you have to be careful because some of them will say median price and some of them will say average price some of them are talking national some of them are talking local and i think the median price whole scenario should be thrown out the window <laughs> well sales growth remains sluggish with new listings still climbing compared to a year ago inventory levels are still rising at a statewide level florida realtor chief economic economist brad o'connor said in the statement true yeah do you agree with that yeah, I agree. With that? yeah no no okay Holden Lewis, a home and mortgage expert at NerdWallet, said that the elevated cost of insurance costs is contributing to this stifling home sales in the state. That's our problem. So, yeah, I think that Florida would be a gold mine, it'd be rush if we had like insurance rates like we had, like you know, I had in New Hampshire or Wyoming, you know, right, or right. South Dakota. Mm -hmm. We would be golden. You know, and everybody keeps saying, oh, it's mortgage rates, mortgage, mortgage rates, mortgage rates. No, it's, in my opinion, it's insurance rates, it's insurance rates, it's insurance rates. You're showing homes on the water. Yeah. And you're like, and they're like, hey, you know, what kind of, you know, interest could I get? And I told you, hey, you should bring an insurance agent with you to the show. We were just talking about that. <laughs> just have the insurance agent with you on FaceTime going, no. <laughs> <laughs> insurance quotes are hard to come by you know to you know get a ballpark because it's based on you okay. etc but at the end of the day waterfront property on the water is and, and I'll give you and I'll, I'll give you guys a perfect perfect example I got a quote for insurance for a house that I'm building in Hudson mm -hmm. on the water okay the house is gonna be the bottom floor of the house is gonna be 18 feet okay so basically before you reach the house okay it's gonna be on stilts because that's what's required they're saying that I need to have a flood insurance because I will have a mortgage on that house I was like why do I need flood insurance because I'm 18 feet up in the air they're like in case you get flooded I said if I get flooded everybody in Florida is in trouble yeah if you get 18 if you have 18 feet of standing water yeah do we, We'll, so they won't like, be doing videos anymore. So they're like, hey, you know what? We really, the, the honest truth is we don't care if you're on the ground floor or the top floor. We don't care if the storm is in Miami or whatever. We have to spread the cost throughout right. everybody. So the only way that's you know, between the insurance and the taxes and the mortgage, it's going to be ridiculous. I'm not even going to be living there full time. Right. So what I got to do is save more money and not have a mortgage right and then just put fire theft and liability on it otherwise i think i'll be paying like between everything maybe thirty thousand dollars a year between a mortgage not even a big mortgage and the taxes right. and insurance yeah and your house that you're building is not you know some multi-million dollar mansion no, this, is, this, this is, is actually below the median cost of a house in florida so it's, it's like 1600 square yeah, feet it's not huge it's just that's it's been one of your bucket list goals for like 30 years and you've been working towards it so, so go for it home insurance has become so expensive in florida that homeowners are having trouble affording higher premiums we've talked about this we talked about and it talked about this and talked about this and talked about this a lot of owners are listing their homes for sale so they can buy or rent in a place that's affordable which is why inventories are rising 
it's a little bit of a broad statement that that's why inventory is rising. There's an inventory is not rising as much as people are hoping just in our area specifically, but we'll see, you know, how this well, a lot of out. a lot of inventory is rising too, because a lot of people have second homes in Florida and they're panicking and they want to sell, sell it before it. it's too late, right? Before the prices do crash or something bad happens or they get the special assessments. So that's why inventory is, yeah, there's a lot of reasons why inventory Listen, is the last that last eight out of ten inspections I did, I'm not kidding you guys, the homes were empty. Yeah. They were out of state homeowners. Yeah, yeah. I've got well, I've got a couple going right now that are out of state. Meanwhile, buyers are cautious as they factor insurance costs into their home purchase decision, he added. Housing economists have suggested that elevated homeowners coverage could be depressing the existing <laughs> of course it is. It is. <laughs> of course it is. Our insurance rates are astronomical and crazy. You have to go bare bones just to barely survive, and it's it's crazy. So you see where this article is going. Like, our problem is insurance, and I don't see a solution, but here we go. Florida cities have some of the highest growth of active listings in the country. True. Which are homes put on the market by their owners, according to Realtor.com. Chief Economist Daniel Hale, Tampa ranked number one, where we live, mm -hmm. ranked number one in listings. And those listings, while Orlando was number three, Jacksonville came in number five, according to Hale. So he, here's the thing. I ran into so many realtors that got excited. They got listings. They were buyer agents. And, I, you know, because of the because of the lawsuit and buyer broker agreement, we won't get into that in this video, they got yep. excited and they got a listing. So they go there and they're like, hey, what do you want to sell it for? And they say, okay, well, I want to sell it for 500000 Well, you know, they pull the stats and they're like, well, it's really only worth $400,000. Mm -hmm. And then they're like, well, I want 500000 But they just want the listing. Yeah, don't buy your listings. Agents, so they're don't like, buy your listings. So they're like, all right, we'll, we'll do 500000 Then in two weeks, I'll tell you that nobody's looking at the house. Then we'll cut the price. And that's why you have a lot of price cuts. Exactly. Look, it's it's the, the realtor's fault. No, it's both. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's bo no, it's both. But the realtor should say to buy the seller say, it's not worth it. Here's the proof. It doesn't matter. I literally just had this conversation three days ago. You know I did because I called you frustrated. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm sitting here with a listing appointment. I have all the data, very simply put. And they want to list their house ten thousand dollars more than any property in their neighborhood is sold for. Did you do it? <laughs> I'm like, you're not going to sell this house. I don't care. Somebody will buy it eventually, and if they don't, I'll just drop the price. It's the worst tactic on the planet. So here's why I say it's both people's fault. There's a difference. If the realtor comes in and says, "Yeah, man, you're a realtor. I'm a realtor. I say it's worth four hundred. You say it's worth four fifty because that's what they want to hear," you're at fault. But when you send an email and says, listen, this I strongly recommend against what you're doing, you're going to end up losing money by doing this strategy, and they still want to list it, of course you put unless, the up. Unless you're in a situation like you're selling a house, a, a property for me, and you know, and you said to me, hey, with the market changing, it's overpriced. It's overpriced. And i like, I don't, I don't care. Because if you get somebody, again, you, but you have a piece of land. But it's waterfront. And it's waterfront. So it's gonna. That's a unique animal. It's land, which takes longer to sell to begin with. Yeah. So if you know anybody who wants to buy a nice piece of land, call Bill. <laughs> but it takes longer. But when I hear every single day from different agents across the board that are good agents and they don't buy listings, what I mean by that is telling you what you want to hear. If you tell me this is the listing price that we're going to go for, just don't yell at me when I come to you and tell you that every showing that you haven't had is because you're too overpriced and people just aren't going to look at your house or the offers that you're getting are coming in at the price that they should be. Don't but, get mad. Yeah, but I know that the realtors to keep the sellers happy, they're, you know, doing open houses and then I talk to the realtors afterwards like nobody showed up. Right, cuz it doesn't matter. I can spend $50,000 marketing an overpriced house and nobody's still going to buy it because it's overpriced. It just doesn't. And if the bank doesn't lend the money on it, it doesn't matter. If the house is only worth 400 as an example, and you want it 500, if the bank won't lend the money, the bank won't lend the money. You know we, what? We're never going to read the rest of the article because we pretty much just explained it yeah. in a nutshell. But 
At the same time, if you're planning to sell your house, and it's not just Florida. This it's, is everywhere. This is everywhere. I have friends in other states, realtor friends that are in other states, and we're in network groups that we meet, you know, online and stuff. And it's this isn't just Florida. This is across the board. And here's the thing. I understand it. It's it's hard not to you know, it's, it's, you have to understand, obviously you're selling your house. You want to get the most money for your house, but you have to be realistic about it. And in our market, you can't go back a year and go, well, I saw this person's house sell. You have to be realistic. And if you're in no hurry to sell your house, that's fine too. Like there's yeah, nothing wrong with and, that. And listen, I'm going to be honest with everybody. In my opinion, that if you bought the house at the peak two, three years ago, you know, and you put a little money down, you're kind of screwed right now for a little while. Yeah, I don't know why you would sell the house. It just, it, monetarily, it doesn't well, make sense. Well, get, people get jobs, their their insurance went up double, you know, their taxes went up because I know two people, and I won't say names, but they're like, oh, my taxes are gonna be three grand. And then they, they adjusted, and for some reason, and I'm not beating up on realtors, but the realtor should explain to them, or they should have went to the county website and figured out the real, their taxes went from three grand to almost nine grand. Yeah. Well, you know, and that's a that's another problem. We could have a video. I think we should do a video on some of this. But what I've seen, even in some of my customers, the bank that they went to, the lender that the customer went to, gave them their numbers. And they said, well, this is what my payment's going to be. And I'm like, I don't think that's the right payment. You're missing some numbers. Because they're here. national bank, and this is a Florida thing. Yeah. And they argued with me, and they said, no, Bill, you were wrong. Mm -hmm. And then the deal fell apart because they got their insurance and they actually got their real taxes that I kept showing them. And then they call you and they say, hey. Yeah. And I'm like, well, remember the email that I sent you? Because I said, yeah. this is the number. Give this to your lender and have them factor it in. So anyways, that's today's video. I don't want to bring this on too long. Do me a favor, consider subscribing. Watch this video. It's right, right here. here. Watch it. It's, 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 here. it's, it's, it's over there. <laughs> Subscribe. Share the video. Give it a thumbs up. It's greatly appreciated, and we'll catch you in the next one. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. We'll see you on the next one. All right, bye. How come the video is always over my face? Because you only know how to do the right side? Yeah. Okay. <laughs>